Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian at Whisper Status 74. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the channel. If this is the first time you are seeing me. Please consider liking and subscribing. We are real tech for real people. Today's video is going to be on the Sony X90J. The last several videos have been on this brand new 2021 mid-range full array local dimming LED from Sony that I have here courtesy of Value Electronics. Now the last videos have been on this panel. We've covered gameplay, we've covered some of the settings. Today we're gonna do my initial thoughts or my early thoughts. This will not be a full review. I'll tell you some of the things that I like about it, some of the things that I don't like about it. And after that, we'll do some PS5 gameplay with other content to follow in the next few days. Thank you for joining me. All right, guys, here we are in front of the Sony X90J, 65-inch full-array local dimming mid-tier LED from Sony 2021. Special thank you to Robert and Wendy Zahn of Value Electronics for lending me this display for extended review. I will also get down to their store to show you the newer panels as they come out. Unfortunately, panels are not shipping as on time as they're supposed to. They tend to have a day, then they get pushed back a few days. So we're really trying to work around the delays. They're not official delays, it's just more shipping delays. So we'll get back down there and have Robert introduce more panels for you. Um, I wanna give you my thoughts on the Sony X90J, my early impressions. Before I do, I wanna address just a few things. My videos are long and there are, I can do 35 minute videos and just put them out every day. We do more of a deep dive analysis, more real world, real people analysis of me telling you how I feel about the panel, what I like, what I don't like. I show you gameplay and I do just a more in-depth to give you the best possible impressions of what it's like to deal with it every day. With a lot of reviewers, even the very big ones, they have the panel for a few days and they send it back, they do the review. We have these sometimes for a few months. I had the Sony 950H for five months. So we get a really good feel of how it is every day. My goal is to get you to purchase the best panel for you. Not what the best panel is in general. The best panel in the world is the one that is for you, the one you can afford, the one that fits your needs. The reason I was excited about getting the X90J was it is a mid-tier display. It is the successor to last year's 900H, which was extremely popular as it was very affordable. As I mentioned on the channel, in regards to the 900H, I had the opportunity to get that panel and bring it home last year. I didn't want to bring it home as it didn't have its update yet. I wanted to wait till that update arrived, which was supposed to be any day now. It didn't arrive. We're still waiting for it. Um, so I didn't want to miss covering the X90J. It is the successor. Now, before we even go even further, I mentioned that these are long videos. They're 20, 30 minutes. I'll show you some gameplay at the end, and then I'll do separate videos showing you 4K 120, 4K 60. We'll show you HDR. We'll show you other demos. We'll show you it against the CX. We'll show you against the Sony 900E. Before I say that, though, is I've rarely encountered a panel that has received so much hate out of the gate. Last year's CX was, at that time, the most hated panel, as it didn't have HDMI um, in terms of 48 gigabytes per second. That whole debacle, that panel, re I mean, every video I did, the comments were full of, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have that. It turned out being one of the best panels and fully spec panels last year. And it's still an amazing buy for anybody out there. The Sony X90J has also received a tremendous amount of hate, not just on YouTube, but in forums. Um, early reviews from China, from other countries. All I ask is to keep an open mind. All I ask is to see the panel for yourself if possible. I know that is difficult nowadays considering Best Buy hasn't even been bringing their panels in. Um, there is shortages all over. I understand that you can't actually see them the way you would like to see them. But in the comments, calling things absolute garbage, absolute trash, it's not the successor to the 900H, it's worse. It's not worse. It is a brighter panel. It has a higher contrast ratio. I've enjoyed it. These are my thoughts even before I saw Arting's 
early. Um, if you're not a part of an insider program with Artsings, go be part of the insider program. That review dropped today. It is brighter. It has a higher contrast ratio. You can hear that in my last videos in the last week and a half, that it was clearly brighter. Is it the brightest TV in the world? It's not. Also, other than just keeping an open mind, echoing toxicity or hate, that's not, that's something you can't avoid on YouTube. I understand that. I get it. Um, I'm active in the comments. Typically, I will, you know, be the security guard for the comments, not because I want the channel to be just a certain way. I want people to get the help they're looking for. They ask a simple question. I don't want to see them get hammered and be told this thing is a piece of garbage. This thing is this, this thing is that. And you're just echoing things that you've read or you've heard. You've never even seen the panel. That is unavoidable. It's always been that way. I find it worse than ever because these panels aren't even visible in store. So when you're telling me something you've heard or something you've read, keep in mind, it's right here. It's right here. And though Value Electronics has lent me this display, I will tell you what I don't like about it. I want to see you guys have the best panel for you. That out of the way. The X90J very happy with it um i do throw the words mid around a lot um there are only two panels leds this year for sony they've simplified their lineup in the last number of years at least as as far as leds have gone since the 900e 930e z9d 940e the next year 900f they began to streamline 950G. Um, then they had their 800 series. But by having their mid-tier, part of their higher end lineup though, in regards to full array has been fantastic. A lot of sizes. So last year you had your 950H at the flagship, your Z8H at its 8K. This year you'll see the Z9J, which we'll cover. You'll also see the, nine, um, the, 90, the X95, which will be out in the summer. I know that's coming out later. It was out before the 908 last year in regards to the 950H. Um, so it's a little bit weird that it's out in the summer, but having this panel, excuse me, having this panel come out first is interesting. But unlike last year where HCMI 2.1 was on the 900H, but not on the other panels in regards to the AAH and the 950H, only on the ZAH, um, it put all panels in a weird spot. Did you go with the lower end model that wasn't quite as bright, um, but you maybe you can afford a larger one, but it had HDMI 2.1, or do you go with the higher end brand that didn't have HDMI 2.1, or had the, um, the viewing angle, the wide viewing angle, which I don't love myself as it lowers the contrast ratio. But it was a weird year last year. This year should be more interesting in regards to, they all have HDMI 2.1, so you're going to make your choice on budget and picture quality and availability. I like the Sony X90J out of the box. I thought it was very bright. It has a very nice black level. I have not counted the zones yet. Um, the only numbers I actually have are from Arting's Insider Program. I won't share those as I think you should be able to check out their uh, channel. And I'll only share their numbers when their reviews are actually published. But it's definitely brighter. It has a higher contrast ratio, um, which I mentioned before I saw that review. But if you like Sony's clean look, their natural look, uh, their clean lines, their processor. The cognitive processor does make a difference this year. It is very nice. Now, for me, processing doesn't mean don't buy an older panel. Processing alone doesn't it doesn't really mean, I don't get into that marketing, but I do like the upscaling. I do like the image. You're seeing a PS5 behind me um, with God of War. Very happy with the panel. Um, on the flip side, I don't love the build quality. It is a little thick. It is very plasticky in comparison to some of the other panels. Now, the 900H was similar. Um, it just looks, if you were to walk in and see it, it looks like any other Sony that you would see in the Costco's or, or Sam's Club. So I don't love the build quality. It's very plasticky. The feet, while they're very simple to be able to just pop them in, there is no hardware. Um, it does wobble a bit and they are very wide. So I'm used to having 75 inch and 77 inch panels. Having this at almost the very edge 
um, it's just difficult for me even to do comparisons between this and a other panel. Um, unlike the 950H last year, you cannot turn them around. So not something I love. HDMI 2.1, absolutely love that it has it. Absolutely am using it. Um, I don't love having to disable. We're well, actually going to cover that in a second because that's going to go into movies. Um, as much as I like it, it is very responsive. Many of you guys in the comments have said that you've noticed some stutter. That could be the camera. But however, keep in mind, even though it's 4K 120, the Xbox itself will drop frames. It will chug. It's not going to be completely smooth. There is no variable refresh rate just yet. Now, there is a built-in variable refresh rate from Sony to Sony, from what I understand. It does have the PlayStation 5 to the um, X90J. There is kind of a Sony-based variable refresh rate. I haven't really noticed it dropping frames, but when you go from the LG CX with variable refresh rate, it's much quicker. Now, the input lag is very good on this panel. Again, I'll let you see that on artsings.com. But the response time of the OLED mixed with variable refresh rate definitely makes a difference. However, 4K 120 is still an absolute joy on this panel. Keep in mind, though, guys, chasing 4K 120, unless it's a few different games, a lot of times image quality gets absolutely like crippled um, playing dirt at 4k 120 does for me does not look good i don't care how responsive it is even the um xbox uh series x boost games to me as much as i love playing titanfall at 4k 120 and battlefield i don't love that they've been so soft they look much worse than they did before so i'm going to go with image quality and performance 4k 60 is absolutely fine you'll see some gameplay today from some of the ps5 games that i have love that it has 4k 120 it really needs to have variable refresh rate now i've also seen in the comments especially from those of you that have just bought um a90j's you've just bought tvs that don't have variable refresh rate i'll see in the comments all the time that it's not important it's not the most important thing but when you have one panel that has it and one doesn't, it is noticeably less responsive. Now, it's also going from OLED to LED, so always keep that in mind. But variable refresh rate does create where the frames sync, and it is seamless. Keep hitting my microphone. It is seamless. It does move much smoother. You're going to see some hiccups. You're going to see hiccups on a PC with its GPU. Um, same with the Xbox Series X or the PS5. You will see some hiccups if it can't handle it. Variable refresh rate keeps that a smooth experience, and it does make it where it doesn't stutter or drop frames. So, is it the most absolutely necessary thing? No, but it's something that needs to come, and it is going to come. I'm not sure when it's coming. They're saying um, spring. I'm guessing summer. I've heard some people in forums say winter. Um, either way, hopefully that update will come while I still have the panel. So I also do not like that I have to disable Dolby Vision. Um, disabling Dolby Vision, uh, if you're using your um, console as a player, is a little bit arduous. You do have to go in, um, if you want to enjoy Dolby Vision, re-put it in the inputs as far as enhance. Uh, enhance without Dolby Vision, enhance with Dolby Vision. It's an extra step, so I recommend having another player, whether it's a, a 4K Blu-ray player. Um, that's something I hope they sort out. So 48 gigabytes per second doesn't really help it in regards to having Dolby Vision. There will be Dolby Vision games on the Series X. I don't hear anything in regards to the PS5. So some, some added things, some good things, some bad things. Um, in regards to Sony's kind of coveted darker corners, yes, it does have it. It doesn't seem to be as bad, but it does. Every Sony I've ever seen um, outside of the OLEDs do have that little bit of darker corner that they all share since the 900E, Z9D, all the way on to these, it does still have that. Screen uniformity on this panel is excellent. There is no banning. There is no DSC from what I can see. That is by the naked eye. I have not run any patterns on it. We'll do Joey from Modern Wise's hockey um, panel you see on everybody's channel. Shout out to Joey, who is Modern Wise, who is big on YouTube. Hopefully he comes back. We'll do that uniformity test for you guys for DSC. So far, 
nothing in the way of banding to where I don't see anything, honestly. I don't see any real DSC. So very happy with that. Um, no dead pixels, nothing like that. It's also, I do like the flexibility with the settings. They have added more settings. There are better ways to change the image. I do like that every preset looks very different. I do like that you can make the Sony look as natural and as realistic as you like, and then make it look as punchy and cartoonish as you like. You like, um, motion interpolation you like reality creation you like extended um you like advanced contrast enhancer lay that on make it look as cartoony and as crazy as you want or make it look as natural as you like also like sony uh, panels of the past game mode is gorgeous out of the box it doesn't compromise its local dimming to make um, game mode faster or more responsive. I love the way game mode looks on Sony's. Um, out of the box, to me, the Sony looks amazing. Last year, comparing the 950H to the CX, the 950H game mode out of the box was gorgeous. The CX is something that you have to mess with. Once you get it going, it's gorgeous. Very happy with it. Those are my initial thoughts. Um, blooming, let's talk about blooming. So due to its zone count, I'm guessing, I haven't really counted the zones myself just yet. The blooming, and this is where I have to talk about all of us that review TVs, is that when you're going from OLEDs and you're watching OLEDs, um, like for me, for instance, when I was watching last year's um, A9S, uh, the CX, I was looking at the 950H. These were all small panels, 49 inches, 55 inches. And then once I received my 77 inch CX, I was blown away by how soft the image looked. That's pixel density, that's a smaller image. You have to clean the palette a little bit when you're reviewing these things or spending any time with them. So when I had the R635, I have to let myself get adjusted to LEDs again. The Sony 900E, which I have downstairs at 75 inches, is a fantastic panel, one of the best LEDs ever made. You will see this lined up with it. Um, I believe it is a brighter panel. The Sony 900E was 900 nits, almost 1,000 nits. It's also 75 inches. But you will see them fight. But my point is, I watch OLEDs and LEDs. I am allergic to blooming. So whether it's the blooming in the black bars or blooming around bright objects, that is not blooming, by the way. That is just my camera's light. What is blooming like on this panel? Blooming on this panel isn't so much haloing around bright objects. I don't see that. Other than subtitles, the subtitles are very complicated as they are lines of dialogue. They're a little hard for the algorithm to keep track of. Now, what I mean by that, other than subtitles, which again, you'll hear many reviewers talk about how hard it is for the algorithm to keep track of lines of dialogue. Um, bright objects such as loading screens, I don't really notice the halo around it. What it will do is light up that side of the TV. So when you see images next to black bars watching Jaws the other day, when Jaws uh, in Dolby Vision started, the bars were completely black. I was very happy with how it looked. I've watched several films on it. I've watched Netflix. I've watched Dolby Vision. I've watched HDR10. Um, the blooming tends to be, again, even in the Spears and Munsell demo disc, when you would see the black level, everything would stay black on one side. And then it would bright, like like it would quickly brighten up that area meaning the whole zone would light up a little bit and then dissipate versus a halo around the object so sony and samsung handle um LED, leds handle brightness different especially with micro led or mini led but where you see how sony or i should say samsung handles it differently you might see some blooming around bright objects when you're looking at the demos i'll play here with the bubbles you don't really see that halo around each bubble but when there is black directly behind it you will see a little bit of that area light up it's not flash lighting meaning it doesn't you don't see um light shooting out it'll just kind of briefly light up that area and then it'll dissipate it's not super distracting but being somebody who uses an oled all the time i have to kind of reset my thought process if i go from an oled 
to any LED, I'm going to say, oh, wow, look at this. I can't believe the blooming that's here. Um, the Samsung Q90A this year is doing an amazing job as long as you're directly in front of it. The 900A, same thing. Um, off angle viewing, it tends to hold its color, but yes, the black bars will turn purple or blue from the side. But so far, 20 minutes in, I am enjoying the panel. I do like it. It is an LED. It is gonna have some blooming. It's not gonna have the jet black bars. It doesn't crush any blacks from what I can tell. Um, Sony is known and this panel is no different known to keep its shadow detail intact and this is right there it is a very clean image uh, the pixel response seems very good like other sony's in the past it took a huge update um, when i first had it so for a lot of the reviews that you heard from whether it's on other channels or in forums keep in mind that a lot of that was before this tv took the update now about that I totally agree. These displays, but unfortunately all electronics are that way, updates have affected picture quality. Um, updates used to be just a, um, you know, like an operating system thing. They didn't change image quality or fix motion issues or change local dimming. So to have this panel take an update that repairs a lot of things that other reviewers and the forums had seen, that's really unfortunate because you can't expect those reviewers or those um, forums to then go purchase the display again. Some reviewers only have panels for a few days. Some are lent only a few days. So all I ask is keep an open mind. Watch as many sources as you can. Don't just take my word for it. Take the larger YouTube channels, the um, the big guys, the little guys, the medium guys, watch us all and come to your conclusion. But in the comments, remember to watch everyone and to not just destroy something without actually seeing it and give things the benefit of the doubt till you can actually see some footage on it and hear the dialogue behind it. So that's been my long 21 minute early thoughts of the panel. Um, I do like it very much like it out of the box build quality is decent acmi 2.1 is such a welcome addition it needs variable refresh rate to be more responsive i like the motion i love the colors i love the shadow detail it does bloom it is not a bloom box it is not as excessive blooming so it's still something that hasn't really been so distracting for me and i can't stand blooming i do love the higher peak brightness i do love the higher contrast ratio if you have a 900 h you shouldn't be upset it is an incremental upgrade but at least it is an upgrade so keep that in mind the 900 h was awesome especially it's um its price point now i will say right now the x90j is a little pricey for its tier and it is in a weird spot because it is on its own the x95 will be out in the summer so a lot of you guys that are looking to purchase something are in that spot of what do i do i would always tell you to wait a little while but the price has already come down a little bit keep an eye on it and I recommend it so far. I have no real issues with it. Let's show you a little bit of gameplay. This video will be about 35 minutes long. I apologize again for the length, but this is what I do. Please keep it civil in the comments. Please keep an open mind. Share your opinion. Tell me if you don't like it, but tell me why you don't like it. Tell me you've seen it and you don't like it, but just try and be civil. I know I'm asking a lot, but we have the best community on the platform. You guys are awesome. You guys are so helpful. Help those new people that are just trying to find a TV and just help them or even help them by telling them why you don't like it, but just articulate it a little bit in a positive way. I would really appreciate it. All right, guys, we are going to start with God of War, quickly showing you the menu that we are in game mode on the X90J. God of War was updated to run 4K60, an already gorgeous, gorgeous game. But it's amazing how the frame rate from 30 to 60 with great visuals just cleans it up. 
We'll do separate videos on separate titles where you'll hear the sound from the game, but I am doing the voiceovers um, as my studio is under construction right now or being gutted as, as of right now, so it's easier for me to do this after. A lot of pop, very, very clean, um, especially with the next games coming up behind this one, but unbelievable how clean it is. The game, or I should say, the Sony seems much brighter than it is, and I believe it's because Sony's always been known for sustained brightness. It keeps its brightness for a while before dropping off. Very clean image, excellent HDR. Show you a little bit of combat here. You see the contrast ratio at work, specular highlights. Now, unfortunately, you're watching the beginning of many of these games. One reason is I don't have time to play a lot of games as much as I love games. Two, a lot of my progress did not transfer over. I did beat God of War. But even in the Spider-Man titles, you're going to see prompts on how to play the game as I lost a lot of my um, progress from the original Spider-Man and didn't have a chance to play Miles Morales. Very responsive as well, so perhaps that's the VRR PlayStation Sony connection to its own panels. Now screen tearing isn't really something you'll see much of because games have a built-in VSync, but you will see drops in frames, and I don't see that here with any of the titles that I've played. Spider-Man looks unbelievable. Sorry again for the prompt. But it's such a clean image. And typically in shots like that is where you'll see the DSC or the banding. There is nothing. And had to kind of squint my eyes a few times. And I mentioned in the video earlier about cleaning your palette from one panel to the other. So yes, the blacks are not as good as an OLED, but using an OLED for a long time now, it's just so welcome to have the peak brightness back. Even though the CX is not much um, less bright than this panel, it's just the ears, no ABL, it's just, you can leave it all day. There's your thumbnail, boom, beautiful shot. A lot of wow moments while showing you these titles and again we're going to go back and play a lot of these games if you want to see any of these games featured alone let me know we have returnals coming out which i've already downloaded and we'll do the resident evil demo um, which i filmed but i'll redo that for the next demo which comes out in a few days again sorry for the menu prompts usually i'd, I'd show you um, Horizon Zero Dawn, but again, my progress did not transfer over. Super, super impressed with its gameplay. Sony, again, known for its pixel response, always being pretty quick with their um, LEDs. And this panel is no exception. But the colors... And again, like I mentioned earlier too, the flexibility to make the image look as natural, as accurate, and as punchy as you like. You can make it look super saturated, super colorful. Here's Dirt 5. Now, Dirt 5 is an interesting game. I don't enjoy playing the game very much. I'm more of a Forza player, but it is beautiful. I have no use really for the 120 FPS. It just takes the graphics way, way down. It looks less than a PS4 game. We'll show you some quick gameplay here, but it does look beautiful. This is the favor graphics, or I should say image quality. So you have your ray tracing built into it, but look at the detail as I smash into that car. <laughs> And also no jail bars. When you talk about LED, sometimes you can see the zones in between as you pan. I don't see that here. See that a lot on Samsungs though. Now 
you'll see a little bit of a darker track. Oh, what's funny is even though the controller is very intuitive, I find it a little distracting in this game because the controller feels like it's going to explode in your hand every time you touch something. Here, I'm just going to plow through everybody Mad Max style. A lot of different um, tracks, weather effects, really cool. Just the rally thing's always been... Not my thing. But it looks amazing. Now up next we have Days Gone, which again looks amazing. Was updated to 4K60. This game really combined a lot of the, you know, Last of Us, Far Cry, you know, gameplay. Excellent game, but gorgeous title. Very detailed. Though you'll see like the water textures pop in right there. But that's not the Sony. See it right there. As the reflections pop in. But beautiful, beautiful game. And that banding you see is from the frame rate. How clear that is. Absolutely gorgeous. Very little pop in as far as draw distance, and the HDR is amazing. Now, as we go over to what I think is the best looking game as of this moment on the PS5, the Demon Souls remake. I wanted to show you this one because it does show some dark caves walking in. And it handles it really, really well. Excuse we go into the darker environment. And as we move up, you'll see that it remains black behind me. Especially as we walk into this part of the castle as it gets very dark. You should see it coming up here as I walk into this little tunnel. See how it still remains? There isn't blooming. Looks very good. Should be here as well, walking into this tunnel. I see how black that is going forward, like that darkness is there. So I'm very, very impressed with that. I think the X90J is going to be an excellent choice when the price starts to drop a little bit, especially when the 95 comes out. I wish I had time to really play these types of games. I love the scene here where the castle shows up. It's like a Castlevania-esque to it. Like absolutely stunning.
Now here we're going to go on to Ghost of Shishima. We'll do a video on its own and we'll actually show it in the dark. But my progress did transfer on this one, even though I didn't make it very far. But it looks amazing. You know, it's a little bit punchier. Again, live color is enabled. Very impressive draw distance. Now I'll say about Sony with their own titles, I don't care what the resolution is, they do an incredible job. And here we are at Ratchet and Clank. I'm actually almost done with this game for like four years after its release. The new one looks incredible. But this one again was updated to 4K60. Runs amazing. All the blur is gone. All right, guys. Thank you as always. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for all your comments. And thank you for hanging with me through this very long video. I will see you in the comments. Have a great day. Let me know what you think. Looks beautiful. All right, guys. Take care.